I am the Good Shepherd, I know my sheep, and my sheep knows me. They listen to my voice, and they follow me. As I told you in the beginning of the Mass today, is the fourth Sunday of Easter is known as the Sunday of the Good Shepherd. And this is from the very ancient days that today we remember not only Jesus as the one who really shepherded us, but also that God, in his providence, he asked the apostles to continue to select from among them successors to follow them to do the same job that Jesus has mandate, has ordered the disciples to do, to go out and teach all nations and bring the truth of the gospel to every person. In the first reading today, we see that although the apostles took it very seriously, the command of Jesus to go and teach all nations, today we see Paul and Barnabas, you know, Barnabas was the one who really was sent by the disciples from Jerusalem because they see the need of these Gentiles who are opening their hearts to the word of God. And because Barnabas, although a good man, was not a good speaker, they searched for Saul and Tars from Tarsus. That means for Paul. And after he brought him to with him, they went to the first the first city they visit was uh, the city of Pisidia, the city of Antioch. And there they found, they found the, the, uh, the, the Gentiles so eager to know about Jesus. In fact, not only they spoke to them and performed miracles, but also they brought so many crowds that the Jews who came from Jerusalem was full of jealousy and they want to destroy them. In fact, they, they begin a persecution uh, uh, against them and they were thrown out of the city, as we heard, and Paul and Barnabas went to Iconium. That will go hand in hand with the gospel today because Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. And he is the Good Shepherd because he is the one that really teach us what a shepherd is all about. Jesus is the leader. We are the follower. If we want to be good sheep, we have to do two things. Listen and follow the words of Jesus. Listen and follow the words of Jesus. In other words, not only listen, but put into action what Jesus is commanding us to do. If you love me, keep my commands. And what is the command? that God so loved the world that he sent his only son and whoever believes in him and listen to his word he will be saved because through him alone we can come to the father that's why Jesus said the father and I we are one in other words you come to the father with me if you do the will of the father and the will of the father is that we listen and we listen to the word of God how many times I say in my in my whole ministry of serving people. It is impos it's impossible to love God, it's impossible to follow Jesus if you don't study, meditate the word of scriptures. Because there we know that Jesus has said it well, well, well. This word is not mine. I have received it from the Father. I brought it to you that you might have eternal life. And eternal life means that you will be saved. So whoever abandons scriptures there is a difficulty for him to be saved. Because how can he know where he is going if he has no direction of the word of God to lead him where he is going? And the word of God is Jesus Christ. Saint Jerome used to say, if you want to know Jesus, you have to know scriptures. And scripture is the word of God made flesh, Jesus Christ, at verbum caro facto mass. And he became flesh so that we have a relationship with him, a person to person relationship. And then if we not only accept him, but also accept his word, we will follow him. And that's why today, in that second reading today, remind us that the persecution of the church was something vital in order the church will purify herself. Look at those men and women standing at the Lamb, at the throne of the Lamb, all dressed in white, because they have whitened their clothes 
by putting themselves in the blood of the Lamb, they wash them in the blood of the Lamb, that means they, they follow the precepts of the Lord. If you want to follow me, take up your cross. And they really immerse themselves in the passion of Christ. And that's why they have the palms in their hands, because now they are victorious martyrs. And they are following the Lamb, and they are thanking the Lamb for choosing them to be instrument for others to follow. And that's why he said, and they will come to the waters of spring, the spring of water. They will come to the heart of Jesus. And from that heart they will be satisfied. There is no any more drought. There is no any more thirst. There is no any more hunger. There is no any more beating of the sun. Because now they are selected. They are elected to the, to the throne of the, of the elect. Today, dear people, we, as we speak about the fourth Sunday, which is the, the Sunday of the Good Shepherd, we know that Jesus did not come to begin the church and leave it there. He select others. He select twelve. And to this twelve, he gave them full authority. This is what we have been reading during the, Lent, the, uh, the season of Easter. He spoke to them, receive the Holy Spirit on the day of resurrection. As the Father has sent me, you are going to be sent. Why? To forgive sins. To bring reconciliation, to bring God's mercy to people. As I have come to bring that mercy. I show that my mercy, not only with the hungry, not only with the cripples, not only with the sick, not only with the dead, but with you. I show you that the Father so loved you. That the Father has given me this to had gave me gave me gave me you to me and nobody can take them away from him because I come not to condemn the world but to save it. And now that he has bring these apostles, the apostles also begin to think that their lives will come to an end because of martyrdom or, or, or normal death. And those say they select people from the community. And by laying hands on them they bestow the Holy Spirit. They bestow the Holy Orders. They bestow uh, their gift that they receive from Jesus. And for over 2,000 years, that succession never stopped. Men are called, and bishops lay hands on them, and bishops lay hands on bishops to become bishops, and so that the church continued to go. And what, why we have these leaders? To continue to proclaim this very gospel. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep. My sheep knows me. They listen to me, and they follow me. And these shepherds that we, that they take the place of Jesus, which I call, I am talking about priests and religious, are people that they have made a very uh, important mark in our hearts. Sometimes, you know, we get to know in the tribulation of life by these leaders that we have as priests and religious, by standing with us, by being there with us, by we support them in their ministry. By being there with them, it is a very vital. Look at the ministry of the early church, how the apostles, how Jesus himself, the apostles and Paul, how women and people help them financially and support them in order to continue the vital, the vital call of the evangelization. And today we have even people, lay people to side, even priests and religious, to continue to do the work of the Lord. And sometimes because of this different charisma that God gave to these individuals, some people are attracted to that charisma. And because of that, they come to know the Lord. And that's why today we ask you to pray for the priests and religious, who have been people who have touched your heart, have touched your lives, and brought a difference in your life to come to know the Lord Jesus. We pray for vocations today. Today was the really actual day when the church used to make a plea all over, all over the universe, on the universal church, to pray for vocation. And don't tell me, Father, you know, priest is a very hard life, religious is a very hard life, because I don't believe it. Today, if you look at the, at the media, how many young people sacrifice themselves and give so much of themselves in order to achieve a winning of a game, to be a winner of a race, to be something that, you know, they have to excel in it. Look at the athletes, how many sacrifices they do 
not only on a diet, but exercise in a gym, wake up early in the morning, they have to go for training, they have to take discipline, you know, they have to correct their ways, they have to be taken, sometimes hard, hard correction from their, from their coaches and so forth. Why? Because there is one goal, the winning of the game, the winning of the race. And that is what many young people today are lacking in the church. We are not challenging them enough to follow Jesus, which is the ultimate goal, the ultimate race that we have. And there is many young people today, whether they are religious or even called the priesthood, who are there in the world today. And because there is no one to coach them, there is no one to support them, there is no one to invite them. They are not answering to the call of the Lord who is calling them in their hearts to follow him in a very special way. The call to a vocation is not being done by somebody who tells him you need to become a priest or you, you, are a good, you can be a good priest. If the call comes from God and God calls us heart to heart without no words. God touched the heart of the individual and the individual, after lots of search and prayer, he commit himself or, he or herself to the Lord. And this is what we don't have today. Our young people do not have spiritual directors. Our young people are not attractive to the church because we are not making it attractive. Sometimes we take the church very lightly. Sometimes we take the, the gospel very lightly. Sometimes we don't even see the urgency of evangelization. The, 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 the gift that God gave us in the waters of baptism has called us to send us to bring this good news. And that's why the church in her wisdom at the Vatican Council call each one of us priestly people. Because we are priestly by our actions of baptism. To offer to God sacrifice, but also to bring others to this sacrifice, to bring others to Jesus. My dear people, pray for vocations. The church needs good men, good women, so that those values that we read in the gospel will continue to be proclaimed. Those gospel messages of good news will be continued to proclaim throughout the world. And we need to do that because we know that our time on earth will come to an end. And at the end of the journey, we have to answer the Lord what we have done with all that the Lord has given to each one of us. My dear people, that is my fear at Judgment Day, that sometimes I did not do my best to bring others to know the gift of the Gospel. And that is what we need to understand, that Jesus is saying these words to us, not just to be read on Sunday, but to really become part of our hearts. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. My dear people, I tell you from my experience, how many times, you know, I go to visit people in the hospital. Sometimes they are ha have comatose, or even sometimes they are a little bit, you know, sedated because they want to sedate them for, for medical reasons. And they go next to their bed and they say their name, and they hear my voice, and they open their eyes, and you can see reaction by their hands, and they can see that they know that he is here. My dear people, that is the voice we need to have, that people will recognize us from our voice, that our voice is different from the voice of others, because our voice is a voice of caring, is a, is a voice of mercy, is a, vo is, a, is a voice that really cares. And that is what Jesus is teaching each one of us. You know, that is the lesson I learned. How many times, you know, in our lives we have occasions to really bring others to Jesus, to bring others to the fold. But unfortunately, either because we are shy, or sometimes we say it's not my business, or sometimes because, you know, of different reason, we let the occasion go by. And we don't let Jesus be known to the person who is waiting for that word of encouragement. My dear people, today the good, the good Shepherd is calling each one of us to evaluate ourselves and to see, really understand that this Sunday is called not only 
for priests and religious, but for each one of us to be good shepherds for others, to con be concerned about others, to have love for others, to really others can know us differently from other people, that we can be really a light and a voice to these people who really need it. May the Good Shepherd today help us to understand our vocation and to be people not only to listen with his ears, but to really listen with the ears of our hearts so that the relation we have with Jesus will manifest itself in the way we live, in the way we care, in the way we show mercy to others. God bless.